Hey gang, welcome to your 10th and final CSS Grid tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a responsive layout using CSS Grid and Grid Areas. So in the last video I showed you how we could use these Grid Areas to give each different element inside our grid a name. So these things down here, we're given each one of these a Grid Area name then we can use the grid template areas property on the grid itself to distribute these different grid areas onto the web page inside the grid, right? So each different line here is a different row and each of these is in a different column, right? So we're distributing this content onto the grid and that is awesome in itself, but the real power comes into play when we wanna make a responsive design. So say for example, I want this to be the desktop display right so they're positioned in these areas on the grid on the desktop but somewhere else on a mobile we can do that really simply so first of all i want to encompass this in a media query which is going to target screens that are wider than say 760 pixels so we're going to target things like desktops and laptops here right so let's wrap it in a media query first of all we'll say at media and it's going to be screen and the max or rather min hyphen width is going to be 760 pixels right so the minimum width of the browser has to be 760 pixels for this to take effect now let's save this and view it in a browser so right now this is less than 760 pixels which is why we're not getting this layout right here the minimum width of the viewport has to be 760 pixels so as we get larger 760 pixels it switches to this layout otherwise right here it's stacking its default behavior right so we don't want it to stack on smaller screens we want to create some kind of tablet or mobile um, layout if you like which is slightly different than this layout for the desktop so the way I'm going to do that is by just creating this thing all over again so I'm going to copy this instead of writing it all out again and paste it right above here okay so this is going to be the default display for mobiles but when it reaches a minimum width of 760 pixels, it's going to apply this display instead. Make sense? Okay, cool. So what do we want to do on a mobile? Well, first of all, what we want to do is have the header all the way across the top. So that's not going to change. Then you know what? I want the footer to appear underneath the header because there's going to be some information about how to contact us and stuff like that that's important so I want that to go just as a thin strip underneath the, the header on mobile displays so instead of all this junk I'm gonna say footer 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 and footer and if I save this now we're not getting anything great at the minute because now we've got the footer at the bottom and the top and that doesn't really make sense so if you do something like this it's gonna look like junk on your screen okay you need to distribute it properly so that it's not all in two separate places because it can't stretch from this row to this row and place this in between so we need to get rid of this for now because we don't want it at the bottom as well so if we save it now we can see that the footer now is there underneath the header right so now what do we want to do we've got the header and we've got the footer what do we want underneath it well I'm gonna put the main all the way across like so and then underneath this, I want another row, which is going to be the main as well. So I'll say main, 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 main. So the main is spreading across two rows next to each other. So it's okay when you've got the main across two different rows or, or the grid areas across two different rows when they're next to each other, just not when they're apart, okay? So we have the main after the footer. After that, I want to enter in the aside. So we'll say aside, aside. That's going to be on the left of the screen. On the right, we're going to have the nav. So nav, nav on the right. Then we're gonna have the section right at the bottom. Now the last thing we need to do is add on that semicolon. Don't forget that, otherwise it might not display as you intend to. So now we can see this display where we have the header, then the footer, then the main, then the aside, the nav section. It matches up to this display right here, this kind of template, right? So that's for small screens, like so. But when we get to 760 pixels, it's going to switch into this layout right here. So how awesome is that? And how simple is it to rearrange content dependent on your screen size? If we didn't use CSS Grid for this, we'd probably have to either double up on the footer 
So create it twice in the HTML, then display one for the desktop and one for the mobile, so they're in different places. But that's not very semantic. It's just extra unneeded content. Or we'd have to do some jiggery pokery or use some JavaScript to move the element dependent on the screen size. And again, that's not really a good choice. It feels kind of hacky and um, I don't like doing that. This, however, just makes it really, really easy to do it. We can rearrange elements so, so simply dependent on the screen size, okay? So there we go. That's how we can use grid areas for different display sizes. And that concludes this series. So I really hope you've learned a little bit at least about CSS Grid and I hope you see the benefits of it. One more thing I will mention, at the time of recording this, um, it's not fully supported in Internet Explorer or Edge. But what I will do is leave a link to a support grid, which is going to show you browser support for CSS Grid at your time of watching. So if you're unsure whether to use it or not, you can click on this link, check out the support and then make your decision. But to be honest, I'm going to start using it pretty soon. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you do like these videos, my friends, please do not forget to share, subscribe and like them. And I'm going to see you in the very next series.